take another design example uh, for implementation on FPGA board, the real time clock and it has uh, quite many applications right from real time uh, display and uh, which uh, using which you can uh, uh, show uh, in 24 hours uh, or 12 hours uh, time uh, range and uh, what you see is the hardware here for the same and uh, you do not notice that uh, there is an FPGA board and also a digital I O board and of course, there are power supplies, uh, the details of which we will be uh, seeing uh, after, after a lecture or two. And uh, let us get uh, into the uh, basic applications. Uh, apart from this uh, real time display, um, we can have um, uh, up counter or a down counter and uh, uh, we can use the same for an uh, industrial uh, or photographic timer or uh, you can use the same timer uh, with uh, three different alarm settings for uh, medical treatment, so which demands the administration of uh, uh, medicine uh, on timely basis. So, for example, uh, for patients like uh, um, epilepsy, um, they are prone to um, uh, fits and other attacks and um, if they do not uh, take medicine uh, within 45 minutes to 1 hour and uh, needless to say, uh, uh, this will prove uh, a big, um, a very uh, useful thing for such patients. And uh, the features of this uh, real time clock is as follows. So, uh, what we have um, designed is 24 hour clock and um, you will be requiring to do uh, convert it into 12 hour clocks later on and when we uh, deal with the um, uh, assignments for you. And uh, it, it has hours, minutes, seconds push button settings and uh, you can have uh, three independent push button um, switches to set the same. And you have a stopwatch which can count up or down and uh, count setting by push buttons. You can set the up counter or down counter um, uh, by using uh, the same very same push button that you have used for this. And uh, there is also a timer out after um, having run out of the I mean uh, timed out. So, that is after running the set time uh, be it in uh, up counter mode or down counter mode. Uh, uh, when it finds the match with the set time, this uh, timer out signal is uh, this also a single bit output that will be turned on. So, you can use this uh, for example, for uh, firing a rocket if you wish to, you can either have a down counter and when the time is uh, all zeros, you can fire the rocket and a timer out will go on and remains as such. And uh, uh, if you do not like this mode, you can have a real time uh, uh, counting uh, in up counter mode, uh, wherein you can actually see the real time and this, when the set time matches with what you have already, um, you know, which is running. Uh, the, uh, which is the same as the running time. If it matches with that, uh, once again a timer out will be issued. 
and uh, you can use any of these two as per your uh, real application. We have uh, three independent alarms uh, that can be set uh, using uh, DAP switch and uh, alarm settings can be uh, done by push buttons as you had done for the up counter, down counter or time uh, mode setting. And there is a common audio alarm, uh, an alarm is used uh, I mean uh, using making use of a piezoelectric uh, uh, bus up. And uh, when you design a system, what is important is uh, the conception of the uh, product, what will be the, your end product that must be borne in mind. To start with um, as a layman, uh, if you are out on the shop to buy a particular say a clock, so you will be uh, looking at only the display, not the uh, inner details as to uh, whether you have used a controller or any other embedded uh, system uh, or um, uh, whatever, a microprocessor or uh, FPGA. It does not really matter as far as the customer or user is concerned. He is a, co a common man, layman and uh, who does not know the intricacies of the design involved. So you should always as a designer think from that point of view when you design a system. So what appeals to our mind is there must be, uh, uh, you, you want to do uh, a real time clock, you want to have it as a um, uh, uh, on your bench, right. Let us say we uh, wish to put the real time clock right on the uh, table top and uh, you naturally you need uh, 6 digit display for the same, say hours, minutes, seconds and when you have this there must be a provision to set them. So you can have locate the push buttons right beneath this and uh, name it like this. So what is important is the layout is quite important because uh, it, um, it will be very easy to uh, learn how to operate this from the um, uh, common man point of view. And there is a buzzer and uh, which is a piece of electric buzzer and um, there is a timer out LED here. In addition to this you will also have an um, output and um, we have already seen uh, you know, making use of ULN 2003. So you can. Uh, 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 trigger that particular thing. I mean, this uh, timer out can be connected to uh, 2003, one of the outputs, and the um, uh, other end of the um, ULN 2003, which is a Darlington pair uh, open collector, you can connect it to a, a solenoid or a relay and uh, or a solid state relay, whatever, and um, so that you can uh, connect any real time output. For example, for a photographic uh, exposure. Um, you can connect this timer out to the uh, actual lamp which uh, really exposes the film and uh, you can uh, use for the same thing as well. And you ne also need uh, other controls for example you want to have there are so many modes such as uh, time mode. So you can if you want time mode you can uh, set using this here, down position is the time, up position is the um, stop watch and uh, once you have this you also need whether the time must run or stopwatch must run. If you put it in run stopwatch and mode it naturally it um, runs the stopwatch. If you want to set uh, say time, uh, you put it to set here and then uh, let it be in time. If you want uh, stopwatch setting, set stopwatch uh, is all that you have to do. So uh, as you see, so it is. So that will be the most simple thing even a child, a child can handle it and if you design bearing in mind the um, ease of uh, handling as far as the um, common user is concerned. And uh, you have an up counter as well as a down counter and um, uh, you have a, a switch for that uh, which you can set to up or down. And uh, similarly you need an alarm, so these two are earmarked for alarm. You can switch off the alarm or switch on the alarm, uh, this is only to switch off the actual audio alarm, this does not really reset uh, whatever you have set. And uh, you can um, set these alarms, for example, there are three different alarms that you can set, alarm 1 through alarm 3. Of these um, uh, topmost priority is AL1, alarm 1 and uh, AL3 is the uh, lowest, uh, least priority. And you can, uh, uh, if you take to this position, you would be setting or reading the respective alarm. And uh, you also have one um, set and read, this appears to be redundant. Um, uh, it is not really so because we also need to have the same uh, controls for the stopwatch also. You know, once again in stopwatch you have an up counter as well as down counter. So perhaps if you give little more thought you, may, you can uh, save some of these switches. But they, uh, I did not make much attempt in reducing because these switches are already available on the hardware that we have already used for the traffic controller earlier. And uh, in addition to this if you want to reset, normally this will not be provided for the uh, um, user 
this will be uh, with uh, I mean uh, inside the unit, but uh, just for the sake of uh, completeness I have put it here. In fact, you should conceal such uh, research uh, uh, from the uh, from being tampered by the uh, normal uh, customer. So, this is what we have the goal in mind, with this in mind we should go for what hardware is available especially at uh, R&D stage just as we are right now, we are trying to learn the design not the actual the product uh, that is uh, going direct to the market. So, we are on the development stage. So, uh, even then nevertheless we should have to start with this and then go to the actual hardware that we already have. We have already seen the use of a digital input output card and if you notice that one we had 6 digits there and um, I am not going into the details of this because I have already explained to you how to use this and uh, they are all socketed totally so that we can uh, configure for any other application very same uh, board such as digital IO or FPGA board that is going to follow suit will uh, can be reconfigured for any number of applications of course subject to the uh, limitation of the hardware that you have and uh, uh, what all you need in this digital IO card is only this 6 digit display and uh, uh, you note that I have just marked hours, minutes, seconds which was not there earlier when you had uh, seen uh, the last time. And uh, it is only to uh, year mark hours, minutes, seconds and use only 6 digits and nothing more on that board. And on the FPGA card we have a uh, 8 bit DAP switch and uh, we have already seen the setting earlier what we want, what our goal was, was this one and uh, naturally you cannot get uh, one to one correspondence uh, there may have to be a slight difference when you configure the same thing because the hardware is already done and you have no choice over the uh, this. So, as far as possible I have retained the very same uh, uh, I mean arrangement for all the switches except that uh, reset is uh, um, uh, part of the DIP switch here and which was shown as a push button switch in the previous uh, 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 layout. And uh, you have uh, hours, minutes, seconds uh, right at the FPGA board uh, left hand side corner and they are all numbered SW4 through SW1 and there is one more switch here. So, that we may start or stop the up counter or down counter which we have this uh, was also there depicted in the earlier uh, uh, layout that we have seen. And these are naturally push button switches and this is a DAP switch and we have uh, one tonally suppressed all other uh, hardware on the FPGA card. And in addition to this we need one more switch and that is alarm on and off. So, this is a separate switch here uh, what is there on the board on the uh, your right end right on this it is there. So, now let us go into uh, more details first we have to formulate a specification. So, before we uh, specify anything what we want to do we are going to make a chip. So, uh, we need a block diagram for a chip for example, this chip will uh, have to have different uh, switches that you have already uh, seen the, uh, earlier and for example, you uh, in addition to that you need some more signals for example, you need a system clock and uh, you need a reset which was already there and uh, we need a run set uh, switch uh, which was uh, shown there and now notice that I have just added one I here because, uh, because this is the block diagram and uh, the pin diagram as such and this is what we want to um, implement on the uh, I mean using Verilog and uh, while using the Verilog code we are going to precisely use the very same nomenclature and um, nothing different from this. So, for that we have uh, very many such uh, signals for example, I run will be there, there will be R run and uh, simply run set and so on. So, uh, we will have three vari variants for uh, each of these inputs that we will see the details later on and we need a time stopwatch and all these switches we are already uh, you have already seen. So, I will quickly go through this and you need a down up and uh, I stands for the input that is what uh, this is the physical um, uh, input pin that you have to connect and uh, you need three push button switches for hours, minutes, seconds setting and you need to start or stop if you are in uh, up or down counter uh, mode. And uh, if you want uh, turn on or turn off alarm you have this switch, then if you want uh, read set the alarm you have this another switch and uh, for 3 independent alarms you need 3 uh, uh, switches here alarm 1 through uh, 3. And uh, as far as the output is concerned uh, rather outputs are concerned uh, we have um, uh, 6 uh, digit of uh, 7 segment display that you have already seen which I hope is running on a corner. Uh, what is running there on the corner is uh, uh, a display, uh, display for uh, down counting. 
for example, the application for this right uh, for this studio demands 50 minutes uh, program. Every episode is going to come as a 50 minutes for you and uh, we have just when we started we have switched on the uh, down counter. I hope it is running at uh, some corner and um, uh, so when the time is over it will be 0 and it will stop as well as uh, give the buzzer output and that is the purpose of this uh, stopwatch using the very same hardware we had done for this particular studio application. And uh, coming to the display those uh, 7 seg uh, segment displays are 6 in number display 1 through display 6 and each of which is 8 bits in width and uh, we will go into more details of each of this what uh, each bit is doing and uh, we need 7 segment plus 1 um, decimal point also and uh, so that takes um, 8 bits totally that is the reason why we have 7 through 0 that is uh, 8 bits for each of the displays here. And we also need a beeping sound alarm. So what we had to do is we had to create a square pulse and that is what is output here in beep and uh, this is um, uh, connected straight away to the uh, ULN 2003 or uh, 74 LS05 I think the latter and um, um, output of which is connected to the buzzer and uh, buzzer operates at uh, around 8.5 volts which happens to be the power supply uh, of for the uh, FPGA board that we use. And this naturally the pin diagram or you can regard it as a block diagram of the real time clock. And uh, you have uh, finally one more output for timer output which we have already explained. So next is uh, the actual signal description uh, some of which I have already uh, described. So I will quickly go through each of this here. So, uh, clock is a system clock then uh, reset is asynchronous it's, uh, it is active low as we have used in very many uh, design examples or applications that we have seen before and uh, you have a run set uh, switch then time stop switch up down switch then push button switches for hours minutes seconds then a short stop push button switch then sound alarm on off which is common to all the three alarms and uh, this uh, then uh, this switch that is alarm uh, read set is uh, enables reading or setting of the alarms and uh, you can uh, set or read uh, or even switch off the alarm 1 or alarm 2 or alarm 3 as you have seen listed here separately and uh, there are obviously 6 di uh, digit displays which we have already seen and uh, here what it means is display 1 is the hours so also the display 2 hours will be on your left side that you are seeing on the uh, stopwatch running there and uh, um, that will be the uh, most significant digit on to the extreme left and uh, that is uh, display 1 or counter 1 that we are going to see when you are uh, look into the actual Verilog code. And so is the case for display 2 which happens to be just the LSD hours. So, uh, so is the case for minutes and there are 2 digits once again MSD and LSD uh, corresponding to display 3 and display 4, 5 and 6 or MSD and LSD respectively for seconds display. And you have a beep alarm which we have already seen. The last timer out uh, this is switched on when this set time expires in up or down counter mode. And uh, so there is a note here I will just read it out for you only on one of the three alarms can be set or read at one time. So you cannot do all the three simultaneously you have to do one thing after another and if more than one is set the highest priority alarm alone will be actually set and uh, others are uh, uh, totally ignored. Uh, alarm 1 is the highest priority uh, alarm 2 is middle of that and then alarm 3 is the lowest priority. So what we have already seen we are seeing once again and uh, this time it is going to be little different. So uh, basically uh, now we are going to start the Verilog coding prior to that you should uh, grasp uh, the uh, fundamental principle of the design. So what we do is uh, this is basically the same pinout that we have already seen I am not going to this details um, and what here is um, it was display 1 through display 6 instead of display 1 through display 6 uh, that is actually here. And uh, this is what is going to power the uh, 7 segment that uh, display that is running right now there. So now if it is in stopwatch mode we are going to use counter 7 through 12 which is the case for this particular example that you are seeing. The running stopwatch is using counter 7 through counter 12 and counter 7 corresponds to display 1 in the same order hours, minutes, seconds it is exactly the same order that we have seen for the display. And so is the case for counter 1 through 6 except that this is going to show the actual real time. So your uh, watch display that you have uh, I mean uh, the real time that you have will be uh, through this counter 1 through 6 and uh, one of this will have to be routed to this display and that is done by a MUX here 
and these are all the uh, so many bits of information is going here or here this is a mux is the selector uh, it will select either this or this depending upon this control and this is not as simple as just sing, uh, say, uh, single signal there are multiple signals there maybe six signals or something uh, when we go into details we will see more about it so it is enough to say that we are primarily they are in either time mode or in stopwatch mode if it is in time mode let us say if it is one so counter one through six is um, uh, routed to the uh, connected to the display that you see there otherwise that is when stopwatch is on when it is zero let us say so this counter 7 through 12 will be routed and uh, 1 through 6 will be off right and uh, this is the simplified architecture of real time clock so we have seen in any design how a customer will have to look from his point of view we have to look and um, fashion it and then go on to the uh, architecture and if there is an algorithm you have to do as we have done in detail for um, uh, mpeg jpeg making use of dct quantization earlier which we have seen elaborately earlier and uh, so uh, same is the approach for this design as well for any other design i uh, recommend strongly recommend from my own experience that you adopt similar such uh, strategy now we are going into the verilog code so let us uh, this is the verilog code for real time clock and uh, the design file you had to put this particular uh, design uh, is going to be uh, more than an, i mean almost 2 hours lecture for this uh, the code that is going to run and uh, so uh, please stop me at any point of time you are not clear because we are going into uh, more and more intricate uh, details it is like uh, entering a labyrinth let me warn you so follow it very carefully and uh, you need uh, um, this particular file is a design file so we will nomenclature by the uh, um, uh, common names so for example I want an alarm also so three alarms are there so I nomenclature it as RTC standing for real time clock with alarm facility so dot v is the verilog file the file that you are right now seeing is the dot v you have to locate all this um, verilog codes which is the same as uh, writing any other uh, c program except that this is hardware design language not a software design language we have seen couple of i mean uh, very many number of times the difference between c and uh, this so i will read out the comments here and you also need a test bench to test this one i have not written a very elaborate test bench i will explain for the details i mean uh, further details later on and that will be rtc underscore alarm underscore test dot v this is the test bench in order that we may test the design and this is the design for a real time clock to display time as well as a function as a stopwatch in the latter mode it can count up or down and up to three different sound alarms can be set timing range is uh, i have separate out hours minutes for um, ease of reading although it is not so in the uh, hardware that we have here this is a 24 hours uh, timer and uh, it will go right up to uh, 23 59 59 after which it will go wrap around this and keep on going for eternity so long as there is power available to the system and it is in the same hours minutes seconds for more details see specification sheet we have actually come through the specification sheet right now what we have seen if you have doubt go back to specification sheet and do it and uh, the code real code starts here and uh, here first we had to um, we are going to use only one uh, sub module which is display ROM it is a code conversion from BCD to 7 segment LED outputs and basically what uh, what is going to run as the timer is or uh, counter is a yeah, counter 1 or counter 7 as we have seen before and uh, that will be 4 bit in width and uh, that will have to be um, uh, converted into 7 uh, bits actually there is one more bit also for, uh, earmark for the uh, decimal point that um, uh, right now we are not going to use in this particular project uh, probably if as an assignment it might come I am not very sure about it and uh, we had to include that sub module here that is why we say include and we also need some variables for example I want to uh, keep track of how many millisecond have passed or how many seconds have passed or how many decimillisecond which means 0 0.1 millisecond has passed this is for 0 0.1 millisecond how much um, time has elapsed we have to keep track of this for that we need to define um, it, it simply means dms uh, underscore base is equal to 1999 this is what it means here uh, we are going to operate at 20 megahertz operation and um, uh, the time base is 0 0.1 millisecond as we have seen and that is this one and uh, if you want to change it for uh, simulation purposes uh, um, you had uh, you can make instead of 1999 you can make it as 9 so that you can run much faster and uh, otherwise it will be an impractical task for you to run the test bench 
because we are uh, no longer dealing with a small number, but almost astronomical numbers we are dealing with because hours, minutes, seconds and again from 20 megahertz onwards we had to start counting. That means 20 million count then followed by 60 for seconds, 64 minutes and then 24 hours. You see uh, it has already skyrocketed to astronomical heights. Okay. So, uh, writing an elaborate test bench will be a very difficult affair and we uh, need another definition for example, deci second also we need for which we need a 23 bit uh, counter later on for that we need to set here and this setting is here for 20 megahertz operation the time base is 0.1 second because deci second implies 0.1 second for uh, 23 that all one nines setting this is what is required for 20 megahertz. So, it counts right from 0 to this one. So, I have as we have done for uh, non retrievable mono shot earlier uh, here also it demands from going from 0 through uh, whatever is the last count here 1 followed by so many uh, 6 nines. And uh, if you want uh, normally um, the FPGA card will have a crystal oscillator which may ra not run very accurately. In fact, this particular has some uh, inaccuracy. So, we had to fine tune it. Fortunately, we have the software way of fine tuning and that is simply done by changing this value. right? Instead of uh, theoretically you should have put 1 followed by all 9 here, but I have put here so that I get um, an accuracy within uh, one uh, less than a second for this 50 minutes. I hope you are timing in your watch and cross checking whether it is really true and uh, I have checked couple of times I am satisfied with that I think it is uh, 0.5 second or even less is the accuracy that you get. And uh, we need to define time base which is seconds and uh, we uh, put only 9 there because we are going to count only that 0 0.1 second and here if you count 10 times 0 0.1 second you get 1 second that is how you get a 1 second time base. And similarly for debouncing the switch we need um, 3 millisecond and we are going to derive this from uh, DMS what we have already seen deci millisecond that will uh, serve as the time base and if you count 30 uh, for that 30 into 0 0.1 millisecond is 3 millisecond you would have made 3 millisecond. Uh, debounce time and the actual module starts here we declare the module name this is the actual design module rtc underscore alarm it lists all the ios that you have used which you have already seen in the uh, architecture clock reset run and so on i am not going through that once again just have a look here and i have also put a, a comment here to mean what it is uh, for example if you take alarm off on one nomenclature I have given as I had done before for all other design examples earlier uh, this n stands for uh, negative rather it is low. And uh, that means this, this is single bit signal if it is 0 it means on if it is 1 it means off that is what the comment says for all of them it is exactly the same. So, so is the case for uh, alarm then uh, display 1 through 6 are there and there are 7 segment LED displays display 1 through uh, 1 and 2 for hours. 3 and 4 for minutes and 5 and 6 for seconds. 1, 3 and 5 are MSD, all other uh, things uh, I mean uh, displays are LSD. So, you need a beeping alarm and uh, a highly recommended uh, thing is piezoelectric buzzer, which is a miniature thing which you see on the hardware there. And uh, you also need a timer out and uh, this completes the module declaration there. And we need to what all we have put inside as IOS, we are just listing here. So, I will quickly go through this here and it is for you to grasp it totally. So, this uh, have been uh, already described to you. So, I do not have to go through that. So, hours, minutes, seconds, start, stop, uh, push button and uh, this is alarm off on and uh, then 3 alarms that you have and uh, only one of the 3 alarms can be set or read. If more than one is set, the highest priority al alarm alone will be actually set and others are ignored. Alarm 1 is the highest priority, alarm 3 is the lowest. In the specification we have seen, although we have seen the exactly the same thing, so there is no harm in putting the same thing uh, in the text also. When you write the code, you are not merely ri uh, writing for your own sake. You do not want to just pass your examination and go away. It is to serve for all others who are going to use this subsequently. Some other designer will come and uh, want, would like to change your code for some other application. So, uh, do not you think you will be doing a great service if you put the right comment? That is why I am uh, I have been emphasizing that you put the right proper comments all through. Uh, if possible uh, line by line comment, I think I have adequately put comments. Uh, if, if it is lacking, let me know so that I can improvise on the existing ones. And 
then these are all the output declaration it is 8 bits total. So, you see display 1 through display 6 and uh, we have beep single bit therefore, that is nothing here and uh, whereas, 8 bits are uh, described here in this fashion and so is the case here for display 1 through dis uh, beep and timer out are the two outputs single bit outputs and now you need to declare uh, wherever you have used um, uh, uh, signals in assign statements that will be a wire in the design which we have already seen earlier in several examples and uh, width is declared here display 1 through 6 is uh, uh, declared as wire because finally, you are going to use an assign statement for the same. And uh, similarly, there are so many other wires for example, I want a counter for decimillisecond 0.1 uh, second I want to keep track. So, I can do this by um, uh, running a counter which is 13 bits and uh, you can arrive at number of bits by simply using the calculator that you have on your uh, desktop on the computer and uh, that is how I have uh, arrived at this one. Because you should know how many uh, mag uh, maximum that you need to go accordingly you have to set the number of bits. So, is the case for uh, deci second, deci second is a mighty uh, huge figure because you need 23 bits because we need to have uh, um, uh, 20 million uh, tracked totally and that is why you, this much. Then if you want a counter base which is in seconds you need just uh, 4 bits because 0 through 9 only we need to keep track because all other um, fine uh, things um, uh, timing is already kept by this and um, this is going to refer to this and similarly this is going to refer uh, this counted uh, DMS and uh, in order to keep track of uh, 3 millisecond uh, debounce time and for which you need just uh, 5 bits here because it is going from 0 to 31 you need 5 bits. So, that is how you arrive at the uh, accuracy that you need. Then you declare other wires for example, uh, decimillisecond, time base in second, run time, set time. I will quickly go through all this because uh, there are uh, quite many uh, of them and uh, set stop. I will just read it out and uh, when we uh, come to that respective uh, signal, we will describe what they are. Uh, run stop, then uh, advance hours, minutes, seconds, advance hours as well as time, advance hours, then uh, stop watch then advance minutes time stopwatch then uh, seconds similarly then time and stopwatch is there. You need to uh, reset counter uh, for certain condition then you need this uh, wire for reset counter 1 through counter 6 here and uh, 7 through uh, this are all 1 through 6 is for basically for the running timer and uh, counter 7 to 12 is for the stopwatch up down counter and they also need uh, resetting. Uh, when when the occasion demands. So, counter 7 uh, and you also have to discriminate whether it is in stopwatch mode or in set mode and uh, these are all the signals they will uh, intermediate signals that will be needing uh, in order to fulfill your uh, total design and uh, so is the case for 9, 10, 11 and uh, 12 and you also need presetting. For example, after you go to the fag and let us say 9 is the last after that it should become 0. Uh, or um, uh, if it is down count mode, you may have to go 9, 8 uh, right up to 0. After 0, you have to wrap uh, to 9. So, that uh, that particular thing is called preset and uh, normally this is used for the down counter mode and uh, 8 through 12 is uh, for uh, presetting the same. And then you have counter 1 through 6 for advancing. When should you advance the count by 1? That is what it means here. And uh, once again for counter 7 through 9, you have similar things as you have seen for preset and advance, I mean uh, reset. Uh, now, this, this time it is going to be advanced by 1 and once again it depends upon whether it is in set mode or stopwatch mode and uh, right up to counter 12 you need advance. And then next comes, uh, we have been using always um, uh, uh, statements for realizing um, uh, registers a counter can be realized by that, that also we have seen uh, in very many number of applications. We are going to continue the same trend even in this design. So, it is a, once again this is a very good example for uh, counter based design. It is full of counters and nothing more and uh, simply by using assign statement and always statement the entire verilog can be contained. You can uh, be fully RTL compliant just by using this. So, learning time for verilog is actually uh, uh, dramatically reduce if you just stick on to this and you will also confirm to RTL uh, coding guidelines which will certainly work in the hardware otherwise you are not guaranteed of it is working on the hardware right. I emphasize over emphasis rather and uh, you need to keep track of the counters 
and you need to do the uh, pre incrementing. So, that is what we do and by having a separate counter uh, running for that once again it is also 4 bit in width and they are still wires using assign statements counter 1 through 6 here and uh, this will be used for pre incrementing the actual counter 6 underscore reg which are uh, which is the real counter and uh, so counter 7 through 12 here is uh, serving the similar purpose for the uh, stopwatch and then uh, further wires are there uh, you have plenty of them we had to wade through this signals unfortunately. So, we have uh, probably we are halfway through declaring and then we have another um, uh, uh, signal for uh, run stopwatch down mode. So, when uh, when it is in such a mode we uh, activate another signal and uh, so that once you give like this uh, different uh, meaningful uh, signals you can use it when the occasion demands you can straight away uh, uh, borrow this uh, signal there and uh, do the logic there uh, rather than write a long code uh, each time right that is the reason why we are uh, using so many uh, intermediate signals. And then also uh, you have in this mode if you want to reset the counter 8 we need one more signal similarly you want to uh, reset the counter I think it is in uh, this is um, uh, while the stopwatch is running I suppose is it correct. So, okay. uh, then if you want to decrement the counter 7 through 12 uh, you need uh, this uh, signals here and uh, if you want uh, um, decrement 7 through 12 you um, and uh, this is um, uh, just like we used um, uh, pre inc increment we are going to use a pre decrement counters before we assign to the actual uh, register which is counter 7 underscore reg right D stands for the decrement here and uh, once again the bits are same and uh, now comes the declaration of registers. Registers as you know are the signals that we use in the always block whether it is uh, combination logic or uh, uh, sequential logic right and uh, whatever is appearing in uh, as signals within the always block will have to be uh, declared as register and we need uh, data 1 through data 6 uh, here uh, which is the um, uh, one signal for to mean either counter 1 through counter 6 or counter 7 through counter 12. We have seen right in the simplified architecture uh, routing one of the two and this is precisely that signal which has that uh, single output uh, directly fed to the display. And uh, we also need uh, 13 bits counter uh, decimal millisecond as a register right. Uh, similar names might have appeared, but there are slightly different signals. So, it might be a next signal and uh, I hope there are no duplicates. If there were any duplicates it would have shown off as some error or warning. I did not see anything. If you happen to see any of them you can uh, please correct that. Then uh, for DC second you need 23 bits and they have to be this is the actual register which is going to run. And uh, for time base 1 second this register for uh, debounce counter th this one. And now comes uh, we have already used I run set. Run set is the actual switch. I run set is the actual physical signal that goes into the uh, chip uh, input and within that one we need a register so that we can know the current uh, value as well as compare with, with the previous value. So, that we can know when the transition has made for example, if you push a button how do you recognize the uh, button being pushed only if you keep track of continuously monitor its status uh, at any point of time if it is if you read 0 for that push button switch and uh, later on if you read 1 for the same thing you recognize that the push button has been pressed that is how you recognize. For that you need to store in uh, register and uh, so this is nothing other than iron set, but with a delay and uh, this has been registered when the clock strikes right and uh, that is the nomenclature adopted all through R stands for the register. It, it is nothing other than the actual input signal with a registered uh, uh, it is registered inside. So, that we may keep track of any transition that you make otherwise you cannot recognize the push button being pressed right and uh, for time stopwatch down up all this registers what you see down all here is what we have already seen as inputs in and hours minutes seconds short stop all are registered. So, is the case for alarm off on and three alarms and they are also registered internally here and, uh, and in addition to this uh, the actually uh, in the layout that we have already seen we use only run set and we are going to precisely use the very same variable uh, name or rather uh, we should not use this variable because it is C uh, domain right. Coming back to hardware domain we speak in terms of signals 
right and uh, habits die very hard right it is reflected in my own symptoms. So, I just beware of that refer it to as a signal. So, here what is R run is actually uh, run set after uh, doing the debouncing we are it has to be debounce and you have to write uh, appropriate code for debouncing which will be seeing later on. And all this we see is precisely the very same input or uh, reg with the same name, but uh, now what it implies is it is the debounced uh, switch condition. So, uh, which is actually the same as what we have started with the layout uh, for the uh, common man right very same symbol we are going to use hereafter this will be used extensively. So, is the case for hours minutes seconds push button switch and uh, this also a push button switch which says start stop if you push the button once it will be in stop start mode and if you put the same button again it will be in stop mode. So, just with one push button switch you can uh, play dual role there right. You have an alarm off on uh, once again off and uh, notice that on is uh, low this is a single bit. So, all of them are single bits. So, is the case for alarm read and set you can either read or set the alarm and there are three different alarms and these are precisely that. And now we also have four digit I mean uh, four bit uh, width counters this is the actual counter which is really running for your time right and uh, reg notice that one earlier we have used next that was declared as wire whereas here we it is declared as reg because we are going to use this in always block and four four bits here and uh, counter 1 through 6 for our minutes hours minutes seconds and uh, for uh, if it is in stopwatch mode exactly same hours minute seconds counter uh, 7 through 12 and they are also registers and uh, start stop reg and start stop and uh, hours we have some more here. For example, this you are already familiar start and stop and when you uh, press we should know uh, what was the previous value that previous value will have to be a different register. So, exactly same name with P here. So, this implies it is a previous only then you can by comparison of the two you can know recognize when it is it has been pressed. Similarly, for hours previous value hours underscore delay is what we are going to um, explain later on and uh, this is uh, in the setting mode and uh, on delay output hours we have what is called an on delay timer and uh, that output is this one which we will be needing at the time of setting the uh, hours uh, display and similarly uh, you need uh, 2 seconds uh, delay. So, that uh, when you want to advance if you press the push button once it will advance by 1 if you keep it pressed for 2 seconds minimum it will automatically um, run 10 times faster. So, that uh, I mean uh, long displays I mean uh, long time display uh, you need to uh, you can set it uh, fast. So, it runs at uh, 10 times the normal speed otherwise it will run at 1 second every time you push it will run at that uh, every time you push and uh, when you near uh, the targeted value uh, you can stop before that releasing the button and then advance it by pushing once. So, that you advance step by step this is what is uh, uh, in the uh, market may be a Philips uh, 2 in 1 you would have seen where um, real time display is also available uh, precisely they have used such uh, strategy there in order to set. So, is the case for minutes and seconds uh, again 2 seconds and all are uh, exactly the same you also need advance reset counter 2 and uh, this we have not covered before. So, we need to declare that as a wire because we are going to use in assign statement and reset counter 2 time counter 2 set then uh, reg temporary uh, uh, we need uh, temporary alarm registers and uh, for 6 uh, different alarm uh, uh, displays we need uh, uh, temporary registers. So, it is exactly the same as counter 1 counter 2 and so on for each of them you need a temporary uh, register. So, that we can do the alarm setting for each of the there are 3 uh, different alarms which will be set in using uh, alarm reg 1 through and so on and uh, this is the pre increment as you have seen uh, next earlier also. So, we have uh, 1 through 6 here for uh, temporary alarm setting here and we need advanced temporary alarm reg 1 this is the actual uh, uh, is it the same as uh, is it temporary register only ok. So, this is advancing uh, the uh, that particular very same register if you want to advance you need another signal is it right and uh, you need for 6 such registers here and uh, you also need to 
reset uh, temper uh, we have not seen reset for same registers we need reset here and uh, that is up to this and now comes the independent alarms for example alarm 1 and dredge 1 through 6 you have this is for uh, this corresponds to the uh, uh, counter 1 through counter 6 or counter 7 through uh, counter 12 which is the one second one uh, counter 7 through 12 right. Uh, this corresponds to that it is not the same it is different from the uh, counter 7 but uh, it has a similar meaning to that right. This is exclusively for setting the alarm you have three different uh, alarm that can be set uh, right and uh, as I mentioned in for epilepsy patient we need to set uh, three times say at uh, morning 7 o'clock and then uh, afternoon 1 o'clock and then again at uh, dinner time say 8 o'clock and uh, if they miss the tablets uh, within half an hour if they do not take they will promptly get uh, fits. So, in order to overcome that one you can have three different settings. So, we have alarm 1 uh, through alarm 3 here. So, alarm 2 here and alarm 3 here and uh, for uh, you also need advance hours temporary al uh, alarm you have to advance them. So, and for hours minutes seconds you have to advance and uh, two digits will um, uh, run independently you have to set hours separately. Uh, apart from minutes and seconds and uh, you also have one set alarm and that is uh, declared as uh, wire and one uh, alarm is there this register here alarm read set also you need and uh, you have uh, uh, dis display time, display stopwatch, display alarm when we go into details we will see more about this. We also need uh, to sound the buzzer for that we need some 30 seconds uh, counter and uh, after uh, end of which the buzzer will automatically stop you do not have to redo any resetting etcetera everything is automatic if you want to introduce more automation you can you are free to amend the codes and after you learn this and uh, you also need uh, a delay another uh, register and you want to match for independent alarms. So, for that another signal is required uh, this goes high when the run time matches the alarm one set point how to set etcetera we will be seeing and uh, we also need alarm 130 second counter next this is for pre incrementing the counter and uh, if you want to advance alarm 130 second counter this is the real counter uh, which runs and this is the pre increment for this and uh, you have similarly alarm 2 and uh, exactly the same thing uh, signals you have here for alarm 2 all up to this and uh, so is the case for alarm 3 here right up to the match and uh, counter and so on. So, you also need uh, registers for beep and ring they are all single bit and this is a bus up we are going to connect and in order to do the beeping we need to uh, have another counter 3 bits are adequate for that counter and you need to pre increment. So, you need this as well and uh, we have some more register, um, registers and term uh, count reg 1 through reg 6 for use with up counter when you set the up counter uh, terminal count I think uh, you need this right and uh, you, you also have another terminal count for uh, uh, next up to this here and then you need advance ter, uh, the terminal count register and uh, as well reset once again advance reset advance reset for uh, each of the uh, 6 registers that you have here. And you also need advance hours uh, TCR here means terminal count register you need some more uh, signals and uh, terminal count reach uh, for up counting uh, if it is reach uh, this will be indicated if it is down counting the terminal count reach when the set delay matches that is what we mean. So, this will be done and uh, they are all uh, wires there and you need a timer out alarm counter which is a 30 seconds counter for audio alarm and uh, once again uh, uh, pre increment then timer out alarm is there and uh, the real time clock. Uh, implementation starts here and um, you have any specific question let us uh, clear that first because uh, we have just finished the declaration. So, only in the next lecture I think we should take it up so that we are fresh from uh, the actual core is from uh, starting from here. So, far what we have seen is only the declaration. You said it is not required to press the buttons in independently to set set the time for up down counting uh, if, if the button is kept pressed for a, a long time you can advance the count. Can you please explain how this is exactly done in the code again? Uh, 
not write in the code, let us go back to the uh, actual layout that we have started with, right? that was here. Uh, for the layman I said we have to have this, let us understand this here. See we want to set let us say hours, minutes, seconds. So uh, what, how do you go and set it up? Now we want to let us say what do you want to set? Do you want uh, stopwatch to be set or a timer to be set? Please come out what you want really. Uh, stopwatch, okay. So, it ha you just set it in set here, then stopwatch, right. Make sure that these things are all off, preferably this is in read and this can be off and um, this also preferably off, right. So, what is going to happen is we want to uh, set the stopwatch. How much time do you want to set? 20 seconds. 20 seconds, okay. So, what all we need to do is we just press this. So, when you press, uh, each time you press and release the button, this will advance by 1. For example, 0, 1, uh, next time you press it will be 0, 2, 0, 3 and so on. And uh, uh, this is a very tedious thing, if you want to set uh, up to 59, if you want to set, it will be a tedious process, you have to press 59 times. In order to relieve your button, um, uh, of the button, so what we do is, we just, um, you just press once and hold it. If you press, having pressed once, it will, um, code will recognize and advance by 1 and then it will uh, continue to see whether you are continuing to press for 2 seconds and more. If it is beyond 2 seconds, it will start running at a very rapid space, I mean, uh, uh, automatically it will roll. So, it will advance 10 times faster. For example, this will become 1, 2, 3 uh, every second instead of this one. So, you have a provision of setting fast. So, uh, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 when you come, you release the thing. Then you would have got almost 51, 52. You have no uh, control over that. So, uh, then after that, uh, uh, suppose you want to set 59 seconds instead of 20. You are, you are now at 52 test stop um, and now you keep on advancing only 6 times and that is precisely what you have here in the timer also, the buzzer has gone because it is right time. Okay. Does it answer your question? Thank you.